What's going on guys? Phil Starr here, absolutely roasting in this room. It's like 30 degrees, the sun is shining all day. I mean, it's crazy, crazy hot, but I'm here, gonna get a wee video for you guys. What's it gonna be about? It's gonna be about sequel pagination. I'm gonna explain the difference between the offset pagination technique versus the seek pattern, which is the one I recommend. Why am I talking about this? Is because recently I made a let's say refactor an effort to refactor based on multiple columns, multiple sort modes, multiple like asynchronous uh, or sorry ascending, descending, different tables, huge data sets, and I want to share that with you. What, what I kind of recommend uh, your approach and why or why you would choose each method. So I've got a nice wee board for you guys. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to get straight to the point. Um, the first kind of SQL pagination you can choose, and not the one I recommend, is going to be the offset method. So what this basically in a nutshell is, you want to select from your database, of course the table, where a certain condition is true, and then you order that by, so it's a consistent. So here you can say if I select each of an ID from this table where, I don't know, age is greater than 11, order by age, so it's asynchronous, you want to limit and then offset. So what you'll actually do is, you, the limit represents the size of the page, so like you can think of it as, I don't know, Google page, it's got like 20 results, and the offset is on what page you're actually on. So if you're on the third page, maybe you want to offset if there's 20 results, 60 records based on your condition. Why this is slow, this is disadvantage is, is, is slow as you progressively go through the records. So it's really fast if you're on page one, page two, okay, quick, because it's a small offset. But if you get the offset and you need to offset like 10K, 100K, a million rows, it's gonna get progressively and consistently slower. Just like this here, kind of chart of grown. So the latency is going to increase. The more pages that you come, the more records that are going to be needed to be paginated, it's going to get slower and slower. It's so not the way I recommend, but saying that, it's probably okay if you inherit this in a system. And like, I don't know, the system doesn't need really fast response times. It's some kind of legacy system. You just use it. It exists. I mean, people will get by, but a very quick win would be to change to seek if the system gets used a lot, if the API then starts to get used a lot, you'll have much faster response times. Also, I want to talk about the seek pattern and why I would recommend this over this. Um, so what the seek pattern will do is instead of offsetting to the record, so like selecting the query, returning the true, and then like coming down to which whatever one you, you're at. So it's a full like traversal of the, the, the table which is really slow. What the seek will do is you will basically jump by a word clause to the cursor after the last cursor of your previous request. So you'll jump down the record. Why it's fast is you're gonna obviously hook into your indexes there. So you're just gonna bounce down the table. And how you actually do that, and I'll tell you one really, really important tip or else you're gonna have uh, missing records actually in your in your pagination if you seek. I've seen it before, it's not what you want. So here the seek would be you select the rows from the table where here what you have is this is going to be what you want to order by. So this is the column. So in this case it's each the first column, so order by each. And this is where people some, some people might get it wrong. You must include a unique identifier of the table in that SQL clause, in, in that offset. Um, why? Because say if you don't have age, you just have age, or sorry, you don't have ID, it's just age. Say if limit is two here, select from where age is greater than 11. So greater than 11, you're coming to this row. So the, on the second paginated set, we're gonna start at the bottom, where age is greater than 11. But because limit's two, we've now missed this row. So the first query would be where each 
and select all from there's no there's no query because it's the very first one. Select from where that order by age ID, we then select the age, which is 11 because it's the last row. We then put age in here, select all where age is greater than 11. Therefore, we jump and we start here. So it's super important that you have a unique ID in this clause, or else you, you'll have missing, you could have missing data in your result sets, which is not good. So this is super fast, super good if you're using Duke which I recommend. Um, it's a really, really amazing library. What you can do is you can create like a sorting field. So you can choose a field the user wants to sort by. And then from that field, you can then actually have the sorting order, which is really important. And then you can put that um, sorting field in the actual seek method. And what you should do is pass in the ID or the unique IDs as like secondary and third clauses in that seek to make sure you have a unique uh, unique cursor pagination and you don't miss any rows. And of course with the seek, it's gonna be consistently kind of fast as long as your indexes are there because you're not offsetting and traversing each table to, to move down. You're just jumping by the indexes, jumping by the normal table, to boom, return these two rows. Should should it kind of be consistent? All right, guys. I hope this has uh, influenced you how to do pagination correctly. Let's see what it is. Shit, sorry about that. Um, I am absolutely toasted in here and sweating. I'm gonna start picking up doing a few more videos. Uh, let me know what you want. Send me a message on YouTube. Uh, let me know what you want to see. And um, have a good night, guys. Take it easy. Bye.